this was the day this sign became more than a symbol. It doesn't mean survival anymore. It is survival. The sirens whose shrill cry of warning triggered a whole complex chain of events are now still. They have done their job. Before the siren sounded, this man was already at the emergency operating center. This is Dan Carter. Average citizen? Average citizens do not know of decontamination factors, equivalent residual dose, or rentgens. Dan Carter does. He has taken hours of intensive training and hours more in perfecting his skill. As RADEP officer for his community, he was on the job at his community's emergency operating center long before public warning was sounded. Like Dan Carter, the staff in this EOC have been well trained to handle their vital jobs. The EOC is the nerve center of the community's emergency operations. Radiological service is an essential staff function in this and every government EOC. This is where information on the radiological hazard is received, evaluated, analyzed, and put into usable form. Such information is essential for the conduct of emergency operations. The assistant RADEP officer is Howard Swanson. His training has been as intensive as Carter's. He is fully prepared to assume Carter's job if necessary. George Scully and Fred Morgan are the RADEP section's plotter analysts, a job which calls for the careful collection and recording of a large volume of RADEP data that will soon come pouring into this EOC. They will record incoming data on maps and logs. They will evaluate radiation decay patterns and estimate exposures of people. Scully and Morgan are not just average citizens either. They know these procedures as a result of hours of on-the-job training. The tools of their trade include maps, overlays, slide rules, nomograms, graph paper, wax pencils, compasses, protractors, and fallout templates. In this community, the functions of the RADEP officer, his assist, the plotter analyst, are handled by separate people. However, in smaller government EOCs, all of the RADEP activities may have to be combined and handled by one person. In this EOC, the RADEF staff is divided into two shifts. Carter and Scully will handle one shift, Swanson and Morgan the other. One of the initial activities will be forecasting fallout based on the UF wind data and likely target areas. Swanson has just received the latest UF data from the Weather Bureau. There you are, George. Frank. If Cobb Air Force Base is hit, I suppose we get all out in this area. Well, they just got the UF data. It hasn't been plotted yet. How soon? Ten minutes. All right. Okay, I'll be back. Dan Carter is first concerned with verifying the operational readiness of his fallout monitoring network. Each station will report to the EOC as soon as at least one monitor is on duty and has checked his equipment at the station. Readiness reports from assigned shelter monitors will be included with the first report of each shelter manager. These monitors will enlarge the RADEF collection network. Each point on the collection network is systematically logged in as it reports to the EOC. Right, how's it going, Dan? Well, Colonel, some of the monitors haven't shown up their stations as yet. Well, do you want to begin reassigning people to these stations now, or hold up a bit to see if they come in? Now we're going to wait. Most will probably report in. Okay. Yeah, Frank, then. Now we'll hold off a while. Yeah, if some monitors don't report to their stations, the RADEF officer may reassign monitors from other locations to the undermanned points in the network. One of the first pieces of the RADEF picture, the fallout forecast, is just being completed. These plots outline areas of serious fallout and show an approximate time of fallout arrival. 
They are employed as an aid in the early analysis of potential radiological hazards. That's done. Uh, all finished? Okay, let's get it up there, huh? All right. broadcast over the local area emergency broadcast system station. 